lady met Debbie through brown bag, I mean through clothes closet, so she has a home church, but she's just visiting tonight, they wasn't doing, so, so, yeah, she was, had a, she had a bad shoe, a shoe, had a bad shoe t- attack, so she had to get it fixed, but um, Charlotte is, uh, Charlotte's good, everything went well, she's headed home, so uh, my wife is at home with some stomach bug or something, I don't know man, what's going on, this thing is just like lingering through people, it just goes house to house, and when you're in the house with people with it, it's like quarantine myself, go you get one of your Tyvek suits and a mask on, walk around with it. So I don't want it, but she's okay. She'll be all right. But we're glad you're here. Um, we will, uh, I think some are downstairs actually helping cover for Miss Charlotte. I know Marcia, and Gary. I mean, no, Sandra, and Sandra's down there. Yeah. Well, I'm grateful for that, uh, you know. <laughs> huh? Pray for the kids or Sandra? Well, let's stand. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. And we will get into our worship. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time. We thank you, Lord, for your grace, for your mercy. We thank you for all that you do. Lord, we lift up everyone that is not here, that's sick. Lord, we ask that you touch them, you be with them. Lord, my wife, we thank you for being with Charlotte through this, this surgery. We're grateful for it. Lord, we ask you to just to continue to touch those that are not feeling well. Lord, be with them. Be with our workers downstairs. Be with our kids downstairs. God, and just bless our time together as we study your word. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. But he brought me in Oh, his love for me Oh, his love for me Who the sun sets free Oh, is free indeed I'm a child of God Yes, I
sing it over yourself. So We were made for more. Mm. Acts chapter 12. Acts chapter 12. Some interesting reading in some of this. I don't know how many questions y'all have or comments y'all have, but hopefully a lot. Um, we start this chapter off in verse 12, or chapter 12, with the slaying of James, the brother of John, being killed. Um, and Verse 3 says that it pleased the Jews that he proceeded further to arrest Peter also because they were so excited about James being killed. Here they are now moving on to arrest Peter. Um, anybody got any, any comments, remarks in this first part of chapter 12? Peter? You know, it's, it's funny, it's interesting because they wanted him bound, but yet they felt like it took so many people because they were fearful of what might happen. And we, we find out later, you know, God does do, do something pretty neat. Um, so they had four squads of soldiers and you know, and, and so Peter was kept in prison, but the church prayed to God without ceasing. It's amazing what prayer will do when you come together and do it in unity. Praying over Peter. And we find out over, starting in verse 6, by where we at? It was one of the feasts. Um, let me see if, um, yeah, um, I meant to, I meant to pull that up because I knew that was going to come up and I did not. It's one of the feast, the Jewish feast. Um, it, it uh, you know, like the Passover, um, it, it, all, all, all of those feasts that they, and, and of course, the name of it kind of tells you what it's about, uh, the unleavened bread, but it was one of the feasts, one of the festivals, one of the feast times that they were in. Um, so, right, right, so, um, I knew I meant, I meant to look that up, and and because I actually had my other Bible downstairs reading it, rereading it today, and I meant to I, I had it highlighted, and I meant to go back and pull that out because I knew that might come up, but it was, I knew I I don't know which one or how or what what the, what because a lot of the feasts had different things. They had, you know, one of them they did nothing but uh, vegetables and stuff, and you know so. Um, the very night when Herod would have brought him out, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. I love this story. He's chained to two men, two soldiers, in between them asleep. Herod was going to Herod was going to go and, and, and bring him out and, and try him or release him, whatever. And the guards before the door were securing the prison. And suddenly. An angel appeared. 
and shown in the prison. And I love this. He said he actually struck Peter on the shoulder, our side. Hey, get up. Wake up, Peter. Um, so, obviously, Peter's now thinking, man, am, this is a cool dream. Man, this is pretty neat. And, and if you, you read all this story, but it said, it said, he told him, he said, rise up quickly. And when he did, the chains fell. Wait, only his, not the other guys. It's, it's, I love this. I love this. He the angel said, dress yourself, put on your sandals. And he did. And he said, I'm gonna, and then he, show, he said to him, wrap your cloak around him and follow me. Peter still, man, this is a great dream. This is a vision, a dream. We know what's going on here. Um, and when they had passed the first and second guards that came to the iron gate leading to the city, in verse 10, which opened to them by itself. Angels just follow me, and they're walking, and they get by the guards, and I'm sure Peter's probably like, oh, man, they're still asleep, okay. Oh, there's a gate, man, it's locked, and it just opens. Peter realized after he got out in the streets and the angel disappeared that this was no dream. Um, and the whole time this is taking place, as we read in verse 5, the church was praying. And what gets me it's when God answers, they're, they're confused. They don't believe it's him. She just shut the door and said, Peter's out of the porch. No, he's not. It's his ghost or his spirit. No, he's outside. Yep. Yep. So, I love what they said in verse 15 when she told them Peter was outside. They said, you're insane. Girl, you done lost your mind. You're crazy. Peter is in jail. He's locked up. Not even thinking about the fact that they had come together and had a prayer meeting that was praying to God release him. Maybe God answered, folks. You know, maybe, just maybe. So, they, oh well, they said in verse 15 that his angel, Peter, continued knocking. When they opened the door and saw him, they were astonished, motioning for them with his hand to be quiet. He described to them how the Lord had led him out of the prison. And he said, go tell these things to James and to his brothers. Then he departed and went to another place. No. Peter did not, was not aware um, that James had been killed. Now, when the day came, there was a great disturbance among the soldiers about what had become of Peter. And when Herod had searched for him and did not find him, he examined the guards and commanded that they should be put to death. Guard had nothing to do with it. Guard did his job. Because no other, other, no, no other prisoner was free, just the one. Let me made you stop and think about it. Um, I don't know if he did at that time, because they were sleeping. Probably, or, or. Well, they or either they were just unaware, because he said they went by two guards. Then they got to the gate. Oh, the, well, they were prisoners. Wasn't they? Two guards, yeah. They could have been asleep. Them two. But the ones, the ones that they passed, I don't know. Um, I'm sure if Peter had a chance, he probably would have said, hey, follow us, watch this. <laughs> and then Herod, we find the death of Herod at the end of the chapter. Um. Um, it says, he was, he was angry with the, with the people of Tari and Sidon, but they came to him in unity, and having made Blastus the king's personal servant, their, fr their friend, they asked for peace because their country was led 
of the king's country. Um, and they appointed the day Herod dressed in a royal apparel, sat on the throne and gave a public speech to them. The mob shouted, it was a voice of God and not of man. Immediately an angel of the Lord struck him because he did not give God the glory and he was eaten by worms and died. Don't share his glory with nobody. And died. And died. Yeah. Well, it just says that he was struck him and he was eaten by worms and died. But the word of God spread and increased. Look at that. Well, I don't know if it, why he died or died while it was happening or spontaneously or what. So my Bible says and died, not then died. It says and died. And it said and. So I don't know if it was because of the worms or a combination of. He was struck down with something anyway. Um, Barnabas and Saul had fulfilled their ministry. They returned from Jerusalem and took with them John, whose surname was Mark. Chapter 13, Barnabas and Saul are commissioned to go to Antioch. And listen, they go to some places. I'm not even going to name some of these towns. Y'all read it. It's in your Bible. Because I'm, I'm going to mess some of them up. Um, um, and it said, they worshiped the Lord and, and fasted. And the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work which I have called them. Then after fasting and praying, they laid hand, their hands on them and they sent them off. Commissioned them to go and preach and to do what God had called them to do. Um. The apostles were in Cyprus. Come on now, y'all ain't got nothing on none of this? Y'all got questions on this? There's a man named Bar-Jesus. Y'all see that man named Bar-Jesus? Yeah. Mockery. Mockery. Yeah. Had to be. Um... He was with the proconsul, uh, Sagaris Paulus, an intellectual, intellect man. The man called for Barnabas and Saul and sought the word of in verse 7 of the God. But the, Elmas the sorcerer, which was a, a name by interpretation, opposed them, trying to divert the, count, the proconsul for, from the faith. Then Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, stared at him and said, You son of the devil, enemy of all righteousness, full of deceit and, all and, all, and of all fraud, will you not cease perverting the right ways of the Lord? Woo! Tell him like it is. Yep. He said, Now look, the hand of the Lord is against you, and you shall, not, you shall be blind, not seeing the sun for a time. Immediately, mist and darkness fell on him. Man, God moved quick on some of these guys, folk. Yeah. But you got to understand what these guys were facing, what they were going through. Yeah. Every one of them, not just Paul, but all the disciples. We, we would have learned through Matthew, Mark, and Luke what these guys went through, the persecution they went through. All the, all the everyone was against them, the Jews, the Romans. Even, we would find out later, even some of the Gentiles were against them that didn't believe. So they, they really had, had a hard time. <laughs> um, it said immediately the mist and darkness fell on him and he went about seek, seeking someone to help to lead him by the hand when the proconsul saw what had happened he believed and was astonished at the doctrine of the Lord Barnabas and, and Paul and Antioch um, anybody got anything there they said, you know, they said they read the law of the prophets. Y'all know the law of the prophets, okay? Um, the rulers of synagogue went word to, to went, sent word to them saying, brothers, if you have any word of exhortation for the people, say it. Paul stood up and motioning with his hand said, men of Israel, 
And you who fear God, listen. The God of this people of Israel chose our fathers and exalted the people when they lived as foreigners in the land of Egypt, and with great power he led them out of it. For about 40 years he endured their conduct in the desert. When he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he gave them the land as an inheritance by lot. Now he's going back to where their ancestors, he's talking about their ancestors. Because look, a lot of these Jewish people, the Israelites, you know, some of them descended, you know, and it, it migrated through. So some of their forefathers, you know, was, was there, some of their, their descendants. He said about 450 years after God gave them judges until Samuel the prophet that's what God wanted every nation to have in the first place was judges. He wanted every nation to be ruled by a judge. But they wanted a king. Give us a king. They wanted to be like everybody else. Does that sound familiar? See? But they, they, he sent a prophet Saul, I mean Samuel. He sent Samuel. And then they required a king, See? See, the prophet wasn't good enough. The judges wasn't good enough, so they wanted a king. And God gave them Saul. <laughs> Here you want a king? Here's your one. Here's your one. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you this guy. Now, we know what happened to Saul. King Saul, that is. For 40 years, he was of the tribe of Benjamin. When he had removed him, he raised up David to be their king. We know the conflict between David and Saul constantly. And it said, he testified, saying, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who will fulfill my entire will. Ooh. Anybody got anything else in chapter 13? As he's, what he's, and what Paul is doing here, he's just going through the Old Testament lineage of, of things from the descendants of God have raised the Savior for, for Israel, um, Jesus, according to his promise. He's just telling them the, the cycle of how things, from, from the, being set free from Egypt to the kings, to the judges, and to David, Saul and David, now to Jesus coming on the scene. He said before his coming, verse 24, John had preached a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. As John was fulfilling his course, he said, Who do you think I am? I am not he, but look, he is coming after me, the sandals of whose feet I am not worthy to untie. Just kind of just telling them, refreshing them. They, some of them had experienced this. You know, they had seen this. Anybody got anything else in 13? Man. I don't remember it, but it's like they have not kept on Okay. Well, I mean, you know, the rest of this that we're on now, you know, he's just talking about God raised Jesus from the dead for many days. He had appeared to those who came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are now his witnesses to the people. Um, he said, we preach to you good news. Paul, Paul is just kind of just reassuring to them what they really already knew. Some of them may not have, may might have, may might not have known about it, but he talked about Psalms. You are my son. Today I've become your father. Quoting Psalms to them. Um, then you read on through and you find out that after David had served by the counsel of God in his own generation, his, he fell asleep. He was buried with his fathers and saw, and saw decay. But he who, who God raised up saw no decay. Um, all right, Tracy, where you at? When the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord and that were, were ordained to eternal life believed. Um, ordained, mine said ordained to life. Some have viewed this verse as teaching random 
predestination, okay? Um, the belief that God has already determined in advance who will go to heaven, who will go to hell. However, neither the contents of this passage nor the word translated ordained um, gives any hint of such an interpretation. Um, verse 46 clearly points to human responsibility in accepting or rejecting eternal life with God. For this reason, a more literal translation of of this would be we're inclined. Willing or prepared to accept. That one seems like the basically the ones that were willing to accept. Yeah, you know, and that's why it's key to pull out words like that. If you're said appointed, mm -hmm. same difference. This says ordained, it doesn't mean by like being ordained in ministry, but it meant it means prepared, willing okay. to accept eternal life and believed. You know, there's a lot of people that teach predestination, that God already knows. God knows who's going to be saved and who's not going to be saved. He knows everything, but he's still giving everybody the opportunity. Yes. See, that, that's why it's referenced in that verse about being ordained or appointed is he referenced back to verse 46 where he said, you, th this was, it, we were sent to preach to you, but because you reject it, you don't want no part. We're going to take what we have to the Gentiles. Well, that's why Paul was raised up anyway. He was raised up and sent to the Gentiles. The disciples were going to preach to the Jews. He was going to preach to the Gentiles. You know, y'all know this. Paul even had an encounter with the disciples. They didn't, they didn't want to accept him. You know, Peter didn't want to, Peter, you better sit down and eat with us, boy. If you're going to be part of this thing. So, I mean, you know, they, they wind up all coming together. Of course they did. But that's, that's the key thing to understand is that because of their rejection of what Paul and Barnabas were, were preaching, Okay, we're going to take it to the Gentiles now. And even, we'll find out later, even some of them reject, rejected it. Um, verse 49 says, The word of the Lord was spread throughout the entire region. Look, every time they do this, God's word just spreads even further. And that's, it leads us to where we're in chapter 9 when, when the church was scattered because of persecution. That's where the gospel went around the world. And it's just reason to reason to reason. The Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised up persecution against Paul and Barnabas and drove them from their region. They went and got the big wigs, so to speak, the influencers, the ones that had influence and the ones that, that were of importance. And they, got, they ran them out of the region. So they shook off the dust of their feet against them and went to... Icom, Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. So they just dusted their feet. Hey, look, you don't want us here? We're going to take this gospel, clean up, and we're going to take it to somebody who wants it. So they went to another, now here they are, Iconium. They entered the synagogue of the Jews together and so spoke that a great crowd of both Jews and Greeks believed. See, some believed them. Some the Jews accepted it. Some of the Greeks accepted it. It said, but the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and embittered their minds against their brothers. See, right there. See, someone influenced the Gentiles. So they continued there a long time, speaking boldly for the Lord, who bore witness to his gracious word, granting signs and wonders to be done by their hands. But the people of the city were divided. Some sided with the Jews and others with the apostles. When an assault was planned by both Gentiles and Jews with their leaders to attack them and to stone them, they learned of it and fled to Lystra and Derbe, cities of Laconia, and the surrounding region, and there they preached the gospel. 
There was one area in here, I think we skipped it. And I... Maybe we didn't. Maybe we hadn't got there yet. I'll see if I can find... Maybe, I don't know. Um, so... There again, they're preaching. Now they go to Lystra. There said a man, a cripple in his feet, who had never walked and was lame from birth. He heard Paul speaking, who looked intently at him and perceived that he had faith to be healed. Discernment. Had to be discernment. Had to be the Holy Spirit just showing him that man believes but he's, now listen, I know some people might think, well, if he believed, Pastor, and he had all that faith, was, why wasn't he already healed? Because it had to be Paul that encountered him. It had to be Paul. It had to be this incident. Look, how many times did, we talked about this, the man at the gate, beautiful. When Jesus went to the pool of Bethsaida, he had to walk by that gate, or whoever had to walk by. That man sat there every day. Jesus walked by and went to Bethsaida. He, he wasn't healed until the disciples walked by him. When Peter and John walked by and they said, silver and gold, we don't have any, but what we have, in the name of Jesus, get up and walk. Jesus didn't even heal that man. Since birth, we get, we don't know how old he was. It don't give us an age. Well, I don't know if he was forty, but I know the young the, uh, the other ki- the other one he healed was because of his parents. They said he's grown. Ask him. No, but Paul saw this man sitting at a, from a distance, and he looked at him. And all he said was, stand up on your feet, and the man jumped up and walked. So when the crowd saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in their Laconian language, the gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. They started calling him Zeus and Hermes. Paul kind of stops them real quick. He kind of gets a little agitated with that. Hey, look, we're just men like you are. That's what he said. Um, He said, man, while you're doing this, we are also men of like nature with you, preaching to you to turn from these vain things to the living God who made heaven and earth and the sea and everything in them who in at times past allowed all nations to walk in their own ways. He did not leave, he did, yet he did not leave himself without witness, for he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, satisfying our hearts and with food and gladness. With these words, they scarcely restrained the, from the crowds from, from sacrificing to them. Um... Anybody else got anything in 14? It says they returned to Syria. Um, it said when they had preached the gospel to the city and made many disciples, they returned to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch. There we go again, back in Antioch. Strengthening the minds of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith to go through many afflictions as they enter the kingdom of God. Yeah. Like, yep. 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 Um, there's a little note on that verse, 19. It says that uh, 
In the New Testament times, God did not always protect his servants from harm. As we can see. Spreading Christ's message has always involved difficulty and opposition, and the fact is no less valid today. God's kingdom and purpose has always advanced at a great cost to God's servants. Paul later described his incident of suffering by saying, Once I was stoned. He probably had this same painful experience in mind when he wrote to the Galatians, to the Galatians I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Paul was whipped with a cat of nine tails three times. Left for shipwreck. Well, we found out last week when Jesus said, go tell Paul what the things he's got to suffer for my sake. Paul could have said, nah, that's all right. I sighed. I'm going to go back and do what I was doing before. I'll just take my chances. Nope, he couldn't. He'd been transformed. Um, they returned to Antioch and Caesarea again, and then chapter 15 is the council in Jerusalem where they're meeting with the council, meeting with the elders, meeting with the apostles. Uh, talking about the manner, talking about the things going on, what God's doing, the things taking place. Um, verse 12 says that the entire assembly remained silent, listened to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what signs and wonders God had done through them among the Gentiles. After they had become silent, James answered, Brothers, listen to me. Simon has declared how God first visited the Gentiles to take from them a, a people for his name. With this words of the prophets agree at his written. And he goes on and talks about that. By the way, that James there is James. Not, it was, is, there was James the less. No, it wasn't John's brother. It was James the less. John's brother was just James. So he would, so, yeah. Yeah, it was a different. Well, there was a couple of Jameses. It may have been Jesus' half-brother, even. Could have been Jesus' half-brother, James. I have to look that up and make sure who that was. No, if there's the one that was dead, then we got a problem with, with that. Yep. Um, and you, and you can read there in verse 16 through 18 what, what was said. Um, he said, therefore, my judgment is that we should not trouble those of the Gentiles who are turning to God, but that we write to them to abstain from food offered to idols for sexual morality, for strangled animals, and for blood. For Moses had, had in every city since early generations those who preach him being read in a synagogue every Sabbath. So basically they're writing to those Gentiles that were turning to God on these things to abstain from. Stay away from these things. Don't know what the strangled animal means. I have to find out what they're talking about. Right. Or it said, just, mine says, from strangled animals and from blood. So. Okay. Okay. Um, the reply to the council of the council, now they're, here they are talking to them, now they're replying. Um, they wrote the letter by hand, it says, to, to the, the apostles and elders and the brothers, to the brothers who are the Gentiles in Antioch and Syria and Sesla. And greetings. And then they have this letter they write to them. We don't need to go over the letter, do we? We got the letter. And we have a conflict. Barnabas wanted to take John Mark with them. Paul didn't want to. They had conflict, so they separated. Barnabas took John Mark, and Paul took Silas. <laughs> Paul and Silas. Chapter 16. Timothy went along with them, too, by the way. That's where Timothy comes on the scene. Paul kind of took him under his wing. Um... Paul had a vision of the Macedonian. Um, 
And listen to what it says, though. It says they went through the region of whatever that city is and Galatia and were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. Now, we read all here throughout where the word of God spread and spread. Now he's telling them you can't, be, you can't do it there. And when they came near Mysa, they tried to go into whatever that is. But the Spirit did not allow them. Okay, and in verse 6, every effort to take Christ's message to other people, lands and culture and cultures must be, begin with and continue to be guided by the Holy Spirit, okay? This was certainly true of the missionary journeys and ministry missions recorded in the book of Acts. The Spirit's guidance may have taken the form of a prophetic revelation, someone speaking a God-given message as motivated by the Spirit, an inner sense of direction to one's mind or spirit, external circumstances or visions. Under the impulse of the Holy Spirit, God's messengers moved forward to take Christ's message to those who had not yet heard of him and were still spiritually lost. The fact that they depended on the Spirit's guidance did not mean that they waited for an un unmistakable sign at, at each turn, trusting that God was putting his desires and thoughts of guidance within them. They moved forward in their plans. When God kept them from going in one direction, they would go in another, trusting the Holy Spirit to either approve or disapprove of their plans. So basically what they were doing was being led by the Spirit. If he said go, they went. If he didn't, they didn't go there. I don't know if they ever questioned it. I don't know if it was the fact that maybe some of them folks had heard this and rejected it, and now he's going to ones that hadn't heard it. I don't think there's really a clear understanding of why he said don't, don't do it in Asia, don't go into those places. <laughs> it says, during the night a vision that came to Paul, a man of Macedonia stood and pleaded with him, saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. After he had seen the vision, immediately he sought we, we sought to go into Macedonia, concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. Then the conversion of Lydia. Lydia, she was a maker of purple. She made the purple. But she was a woman of God. Some say she might have been a prophetess, but I don't, you know, don't know for sure, but. She was definitely a woman of God. Um, the Lord opened her heart to acknowledge what Paul said, and when, when, she, when, her, when she and her household were baptized, she entreated us, saying, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and remain there, and she persuaded us. Uh, imprisonment in Philippi. There he is again, going back to jail. Man, going back to jail. Um, on one occasion, as, as, as we went to the place of prayer, a servant girl possessed with a spirit of dimension. Y'all know what that is, right? A spirit inspired words as messengers from a God, so her services as a fortune teller were in high demand. She was possessed, basically, what she was. But um, So anyway... She, uh, she met us and who brought her masters such profit by fortune telling. She followed Paul and us shouting, these men are servants of the Most High God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. She did it everywhere for many days, everywhere they went. It's a mockery, is what it was. It was a mockery. It was a distraction. It was a disturbance. Yeah, yeah. Just driving confusion and, and dispersing confusion. <laughs> um, but became greatly troubled. Paul turned to the Spirit and said, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out at that moment. At that instant, her master saw that the hope of their prophets were gone. 
they realized that, well, we can't make no money off her anymore. They seized Paul and Silas, dragged him into the marketplace to the rulers. They brought them to the magistrates, saying, These men, being Jews, greatly troubled our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us, being Romans, to receive or observe. The crowd rose up together against them, and the magistrates tore the garments off of them and gave them orders to beat them. After they had many stripes on them, they threw them into the prison, commanding the jailer to guard them securely. Having received such an order, he threw them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. This particular prison they were in, well, all the prisons over there, basically, there was a, like a trench in the middle, and that's where all the bathroom stuff took place. So it wasn't a pretty place. It wasn't a pleasant place. No prison back then was probably pleasant, but it was really, really bad. And they put them in the inner part. Yeah, Tracy's like, Ew. So, having received such an order, they threw them into the inner part, and, they, and their feet were put in stocks. At midnight, Paul and Silas to have, started to have a worship service. Why don't we pray and sing? I'm, Paul, Silas is probably like, man, look what you got us into. And Paul's probably like, man, listen, why don't we just pray and just worship? Worship? What do you mean worship? I'm chained to this nasty place, and you want me to worship? And the prisoners were listening to them. Wow. Suddenly there was a great earthquake. My God, if we could come get worship in here that would shake the ground. Right. I'm all for it. I'm all for it. Let's do it. So they were praying, worshiping. The prisoners were listening. Earthquake came. The foundation of the prison was shaken. And immediately all the doors were open. And everyone's shackles came off. Don't know how many prisoners are in this room or in this place. The jailer awoke and saw the prison doors open. He drew a sword and was going to kill himself. Paul said, hey, 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 don't do that. We're all right here. We, we, we still got a worship service going on. We're not. And that man was saved. His whole household was saved. No. No, he woke up. And was fearful. Paul shouted, don't harm yourself, we're all here. He called for lights and he rushed in trembling and fell down before Paul. And he said, and he, let, he said what must I do to be saved? Tell me something can't happen during worship, during prayer. God can do what he wants with it. They said, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and your, you and your household will be saved. And they spoke the word of the Lord to him and, the, and, and to all who were in his household. Yep. Mm -hmm. No. And he spoke the word of the Lord to him and all who were in the house. And to his house. In that hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds, and immediately he and his entire household were baptized. And they brought them up to the house and set food before them, and, they, and he rejoiced with his entire household, believing in God. It's amazing that they were put in the prison they were put in and where they were put for a jailer who was sitting there who needed to hear it. It didn't say the entire prison system got saved. It said that jailer and his whole house got saved. And then he took him to his house. They baptized all of them, and then they fed them, cleaned them up, took care of them. Man, 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 man. <clears throat> it said when it, when it was day, the magistrate sent the, ser the sergeants saying, release those men. The prison guard reported these words to Paul saying, Magistrates have sent to release you. Now therefore depart and go in peace. But Paul said, They have publicly beaten us and who are uncondemned Romans and have thrown us into prison. And now they and then, now they do they secretly throw us out. Certainly no. Let them come put us out. 
Paul said, "Uh uh-huh, get some of this. You want to do this, if you want to do all of this publicly, then I want you come and put us out. Woo! I love it. I love it. Um, and the magistrates had sent, oh, no, said, no, they told him to, all right. And then he said, the sergeants reported these words to the magistrates, and they were afraid when they heard that they were, that they were Romans. So they came and entreated them, and they brought them out, asking them to leave the city. Then they went out of the prison and entered the house of Lydia. When they had seen the brothers, they exhorted them and departed. Paul was a Rome, a Rome, a Roman citizen. Uh-huh. Was from Rome. Saul was from Rome. But it's interesting here that they, the way it looks, they was at the at the jailer's house with his family, uh-huh. preaching. They got saved. They got baptized. They, he cleaned them up. Took care of the ones they ate. Then they went back to the jail. They went back to the prison. They went back. They're like, we're not going anywhere. You want to get rid of me, then put, you put me out. Pretty amazing. 17 through 21. We're getting there, y'all. We're getting there. 17 through 21 for next week. And then I'm trying to see. There's only... 28 chapters. So. Sure you did. Um, only 28 chapters, so. Then we get into Romans. Romans. 17 through 21 for next week. Um, I think we're moving on past where we left off from Acts, so all this stuff now should be new, familiar. It should be kind of new stuff instead of familiar stuff. We covered some of this before, and I don't know if you remember it in detail, but we covered some of it when we were doing Acts. But we're, we're gonna get, now we're going to finish it and accomplish what we're doing anyway. So, so we do 17 through 21, then we'll do 21 through 27. No. 26. 22 to 27. And then we'll have to go from Acts to, into Romans. 27, 28, and then into Romans, yeah. Huh? <laughs> no. 17 to 21, Debbie, is all you got to remember. 17 to 21. Um, what we're doing is we're reading through the New Testament in a year, five chapters a week, and um, we started in Matthew, and we're just we're reading five chapters a week, then we talk about it on Wednesday. That's, that's what our Bible study is. That's why we was kind of in several chapters tonight, but um, don't have a main topic, don't have a main thing to discuss. We're just talking about, we're actually reading together and learning together, and that's, that was the whole that was the whole thing of this, to get people back in the Word, get them reading again, and, 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 you know, you don't have to do it. I mean, you could come in here, and we can talk about it. You don't have to do it, but when you do it, you, you, you start to see things. You start to see things, and it's, it's, it's pretty neat. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying reading it. I'm enjoying doing it. Um, Sunday is baptism day. I'll be getting this thing ready probably Friday. Sometime Friday, I'll be getting it ready, filled up, and getting the heater on it so it'll be nice and warm for Sunday. <laughs> so I did a baptism one Sunday, and it didn't work. And, man, we was fast. Yeah. In the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, God. <laughs> 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 Amen. 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 Amen.
You know, I had to stay in there. But once you stay in there, you're okay. It was those coming in. They come in and go. Doo, 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 doo. It was like, I know it's cold. I'm sorry. It'd be all right. Come on. Hey, they used to baptize in the rivers, man, in the winter. I'm like, oh, you wait till, I'll wait till spring or summer. <laughs> but no, we're, we're excited. Um, we, we got five people going to be baptized. My wife's doing two of them. And I think the girls are scared to death that she's going to hold them down. <laughs> Good, maybe it will. But, yeah. So it's your fault, Tracy. So, but uh, no, they'll be fine. They'll be fine. I got to get with Jason and his crew, make sure they are aware of what to bring and what to do. So we'll have service, we'll have worship, we'll have service, and then as soon as that, we'll have them get changed and we'll get in the, I have to help my wife in, so she's going to baptize the girls. So, uh, but anyway, we're excited. We're glad. It's a great day. It's a great time. Um. We had a baptismal service one time, and we had like, I don't know, four, five, or six people signed up to baptize. And I was like, anybody else want to be baptized? About six people got up and came up there, got baptized. Tim was one of them. Tim wanted, he went home with his wet clothes. <laughs> I'm like, hey, and I'll do the same thing if some people want to get baptized. Huh? Oh, the end of the year? Yeah. We did that. As we come out of 2020, the Lord has showed me, had told me, have a church-wide baptism. And I'm like, Lord, they've been baptized. He said, I'm talking baptized into this year and going into a new year. Man, Miss Jean, I thought she was about to walk on top of the water. <laughs> she was, she got fired up, man, when we baptized her that day. But, yeah, it was, we had everybody, not everybody done it, but most of the church. Me and Steve was in there, and they were coming in, and we were dunking them and putting them out, dunking them and putting them out. There was a couple of them. Steve put his foot on. It's like, oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. That's right. And then uh, I baptized him. My wife baptized me. Man, that was, it was powerful. It was a powerful day. And, uh, but. We'll help him in. Bring your stuff. Bring your stuff. Bring your stuff. Because my wife, I help her down. I got to help Deb down. So Deborah's going to have to be down. So. He needs to be baptized. To be baptized. We need to baptize. Well, good. I didn't know that, or I would have already talked to him about it. I didn't know that. I will. I'm gonna say, hey, look, bring you some clothes to change into. We want to baptize you Sunday. Don't you worry about. It. You will be fine getting in that baptismal pool. I promise you. Me and Steve will be in there, and we can help him because once Deb's done, she's gonna get out, and somebody's gonna have to be on the outside to help her down the steps, please. Okay. So, Steve's going to have to get in the water. So, because, I mean, if, if, you know, even if he don't, we still need people, you know. Still want people to assist in people in and out. You don't want nobody to slide down the steps. It's wet. You don't want to, you know. So, thanks for coming. Uh, anytime. We enjoyed having you. Let's stand. Thank you. Let's stand. Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, that we can learn. Lord, the things that we're talking about, the things we're reading about, Lord, it's just information. It's just teaching us, learn, making us, helping us learn more about your great book and the things that happened. And, Lord, we're just thankful. Help us. Touch each and every one. Lord, we thank you for Betty being at home. Lord, continue to touch her, strengthen her. Lord, we pray for Lisa. Uh, you know, she's had a couple of rough days. And, we thank you, God, for everything that you're doing. And, Father, we ask today, today that you be with us on Sunday as we worship, as the word is forth, and as we baptize these. God, we're asking that your spirit will rest upon them. And, God, we give you all praise, all glory. 
In Jesus' name, amen.